I always loved the last day of school. Getting out early, saying goodbye to your friends, and having the entire summer ahead of you with endless possibilities. What I didn't realize is that those weren't really last days. I'd inevitably come back and see all my friends again and make even more memories. But now, as a senior and experiencing things like the San Antonio trip, senior prom, and senior run, all of these events that I've looked forward to for many years of my life are all but distant memories now. I loved last days because I knew I'd see everyone again and make even more memories. But now, it truly is the last day and our see you tomorrows are becoming goodbyes. And once we walk out those doors, our lives will never be the same. Hi, my name is Cade Eskew, and I've been attending PCA since pre-K-4, which would make this my 14th year here. And, but first, I have some thanks that are due. First to God, above all else, the relationship I developed throughout my time here is what led to me standing before you today. I am nothing without him, and I give all my praise to him. Second is to my family. First, my parents, for always inspiring me to, for, for always inspiring me to never quit, no matter how difficult things got, which I learned in full force the first day of middle school football conditioning. Specifically to my mom, thank you for always reading my English papers no matter how awful they were. Even the time I gave you my paper and you told me you couldn't read past the first paragraph because it was so bad. <laughs> but seriously, thank you mom for so much. From last minute runs to the store for projects to helping make prom and homecoming posters, you've been a key part in my high school success. And to my dad, Thanks for watching Jeopardy with me to see who knows the most random knowledge and for always reminding me that you could have gotten 105 on every assignment, no matter what it was. <laughs> to my brother Cole and my cousins Katie and Caroline, thank you for always being people I could look up to to figure out the future, for driving me around before I got my license, and for informing me all about the PCA drama while y'all were here. Life has been so much fun with y'all, and I look forward to every time I'll come home. And lastly, I'd like to thank the amazing teachers here Throughout everything, y'all have been truly what sets this school apart. Specifically, I'd like to extend my thanks to the Bible department, as I don't want to imagine where I'd be in my walk if I hadn't taken their classes. To know where our faith comes from and why we should believe in it is the foundation for any strong faith. So I truly thank these men for the amazing knowledge they have imparted me, and I know all my classmates feel the same. Now, class of 2024, look where that extra long spring break in eighth grade got us now. <laughs> it seems just like yesterday that we were clueless freshmen walking the halls, having to wear masks. Now, here we are, getting ready to start the next chapter of our lives and head off to college as we edge closer to our future. But now, as we look toward our future, let's first reflect on our past. In lower school, we learned crushing defeat and sweet victory, and we got way too competitive in partner dodgeball sang and let George do it, and had some very interesting inventions at the Invention Convention. In middle school, we got DRs for bottle flipping and fidget spinners, got detention for posting on a Canvas discussion post, feared for our lives when we lost a water cap in middle school football, and had the stupidest drama on the DC trip. In high school, we had to wear masks and learn how to diagram sentences, and I arguably cannot tell which one was worse. We stopped having to wear those uncomfortable chapel shirts, won state championships in volleyball, basketball, and soccer, and survived senior run with an even better senior run happening later that night. <laughs> the common thread I've realized looking back on these memories is that they all mean so much to me because of the people that I've done them with. While yes, they're all fun by themselves in some regard, having an amazing class of people to experience them with made them even better. This applies to even the most nominal of things, such as how, well, yes, I'll remember the different math lessons Ms. Leininger taught me this year, but when I think of Calc, I'm always gonna first think of Ms. Leininger having to microwave Gavin's test in the middle of the exam because he spilled water on it. <laughs> I just wanna say a thank you to all of my fellow classmates for making an impact on my time at PCA. I truly would not have wanted to spend these many years with anyone else. And I realize that the hardest part about graduating isn't the lifestyle change, but the people I'm leaving behind. But in the end, to face things on your own, well, I guess that's just growing up. And I'm truly going to miss y'all class of 24. Now is the part where I'm supposed to try and teach y'all something, but since no one wants to hear a high schooler try to give life advice, I'm just going to tell you my life first and quickly what it means to me. 
Matthew 5, 6 says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. To me, this verse is two things. First, that we should hunger and thirst for God in all things that we do, even when it is hard to do so. While it may be easy to see God in the good that we experience, it is just as important to see him in the times when we feel like he isn't there. In my experience, we grow the strongest as Christians in these times of tribulation. For example, college apps this year were extremely stressful, probably because I would refresh the UT My Status page multiple times a day, every day for two months, and would drive myself insane trying to figure out when they would come out. However, this stress, from this stress, I started praying much more regularly, something that I continue to this day. Seeking out God in everything, no matter how lost we may feel, is the key to uncovering the light we need to shine in a time of darkness. Second is that we should hunger and thirst for all things we do in fear of their difficulty. And now, I'm not gonna come up here and give all that corny graduation saying that the world is ours for the taking, because even though it may be, it's not something that is easily accomplished. Life is going to be hard whether we want it to be or not, and we have to make the choice to either push through and hunger and thirst for what we want, or let life win and give up. The most growth comes from the hardest things, and in the words of JFK in reference to putting a man on the moon, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The things we dream for and want are interwoven with challenge and adversity because dreams are not merely desires, but the goals we pursue because we know they are difficult. So I ask of my fellow graduates in the room, have something you can hunger and thirst for, have a dream, no matter how far off or implausible, and work towards it during your time in college. Whether that's in academia or athletics or a job or anything, have something you can work towards because it is from this unrelenting work towards something that we grow the most as people. There is no such thing as a painless lesson, but if you can endure that pain and walk away from it, you'll find yourself with a heart strong enough to overcome any obstacle. After facing countless challenges and hardships throughout the last four years, especially after the epic fail of our senior prank, I'm glad that we are all here together reminiscing the memories that we share as the class of 2024 for one last time. Good evening, I'm Shirley, and it is with great honor for me to be standing here today. First, I want to congratulate every senior for your incredible dedication and accomplishments. I would like to start my speech with a few thank yous for the people who have made the most impact in my life. I'm truly grateful for the words of encouragement, accountability, and guidance that was offered to me by the teachers and faculty. Thank you for pouring into my development both as a student and as a person. All of you instilled in me knowledge about God's creation and the desire to seek first God's kingdom. Your love for your students is the greatest gift that we have received here at PCA. To my parents, Dad, thank you for teaching me how to be courageous, how to be bold, how to dream big, and how to work hard towards my goals. And thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice of being here today instead of watching the PGA Championship. <laughs> Mom, thank you for teaching me how to love, how to care, and how to walk in God's words every single day. Thank you for your unwavering support throughout the last 17 years of my life, and I love you more than words can describe. Next, 爷爷奶奶,我永远最爱你们. For those of you who don't speak Mandarin, that was to my grandparents. That meant, Grandma, Grandpa, I will always love you the most. Prestonwood, Thank you for helping me develop a strong Christian foundation. So, as I begin the next chapter of my life, I will prioritize God in all situations and be a light for his words in the difficulties that I will face. Thank you, Quizlet, Notion, and Notability for not charging a mandatory $12.99 monthly subscription for all of us to use. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank God for leading me and guiding me throughout the last 17 years of my life. When I moved to the US from China in eighth grade, I felt lost because this was a completely different culture and way of life.
But God's faithfulness allowed me to face every challenge with courage and boldness, quickly adapting to this new environment. As I look back to our high school years, there have been several key defining moments that have impacted our class. In ninth grade, I think we all remember how disappointed we were to have one extra week of school instead of going on the long coveted mini semester trips. Until in February, God sent us a week of snow and ice because of his whole faithfulness. <laughs> so the extra academic week of school did not exactly work out. 10th grade finally felt like the first normal year of high school, no more masks, and several state championships across all of our amazing sports teams. 11th grade overall felt like a blur, from figuring out what we want to do with the rest of our lives to our overloaded schedule. It's safe to say that it is a miracle that any of us survived junior year. And finally, senior year. We found out that our senior classes are not nearly as easy as what everyone else made us believe. And the stress that we felt of figuring out where we're going to college. This year we experienced a lot of lasts. Our last first day of school, last retreat, last homecoming, last time stepping on that field, court, track, or stage, and so much more. But amidst all this, we have made new friends and deepened our relationships with those around us. We've grown more grateful for the people in our lives. Now, class of 2024, I would encourage you to look at this graduation not as an end of a journey, but as the beginning of new possibilities and opportunities. One of my favorite verses is Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Ultimately, we are all called to serve the Lord with our heart, soul, and mind. When I was looking for inspiration online for this speech, I came across this quote. Hate has four letters, but so does love. Negativity has 10 letters, but so does positivity. Cry has three letters, but so does joy. Class of 24, you always have a choice. Your outlook on life can determine your destiny. So choose the better side of it. Choose love, choose positivity, and choose joy. And from this day forward, I challenge you to go out and change the world for the better with a positive mindset. As we move on to the next chapter, we should all put God in the center of our lives, have an uplifting attitude, and prioritize our relationship with God. We should continue to strive for excellence, lead with compassion, love, and kindness, and to not forget our firm foundation in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our success is not defined by our accolades. Instead, it is defined by the people that we change for the better, the lives of people that we impact. Although we will soon become Longhorns, Aggies, Bears, Wildcats, Raiders, Cowboys, Sooners, Blue Pigs, Horn Frogs, Tigers, and more, we will always be Lions. I cannot wait to spend our last moments together as a great tonight. Congratulations, class of 2024, and welcome. <laughs>